You've probably always wanted to know what your garbage is made of and what you can do about it. As part of my master's thesis on waste management, I decided to conduct household waste audits to understand how much recycling we have in our town. Why do we do waste audits in general? It's to work out what our waste looks like, what a typical household's waste looks like, how much of it is recyclable, compostable and just has to go to landfill. It's important to find a place to sort, separate and weigh the waste that is sheltered from the wind, rain and sun, well ventilated, with good lighting, away from people and hazards, near a waste disposal point and with access to water. We're here sorting the waste out um, for a waste audit and safety is number one. So. I always wear my safety goggles. I'll just put them on the desk for now. Dust mask, mainly for odour. Uh, these are the most important things, gloves, to stop any syringes or any glass. Garbage bags for sorting the waste a bit later on. You really don't want to handle like nappies or condoms. These are your tongs. Scales are important. Got some kitchen scales and some bathroom scales and a set of digital hanging scales for hanging the heavier waste. And they're digital fishing scales. So importantly, we need something to write our results down on and this is a waste audit checklist. Uh, every good scientist has a folder and a pencil and uh, we'll use that a bit later. This is just an example of a foil that can't be recycled, so... But a hard plastic takeaway container can be. Your milk bottle can be. Taking so your, uh, your margarine. Yogurt container, which is plastic. It's got the symbol number six on the bottom which tells me it can be recycled. This is liquid paper board, which is a type of paper that can hold liquid and that can definitely be recycled. And we'll take the plastic lid off that. Plastic lids can only be recycled if they've got a symbol on them. So this is an example of a hard plastic that can't be recycled. So that goes into the mixed waste. Uh, this is paper, but it's contaminated by food and can't be recycled, so that goes into mixed waste. This is just a small bag, so we're almost finished. At the bottom we've got things that are compostable, like bread can be composted. They've missed some banana peel and some tea bags, which can be composted as well. And some wooden skewers that can also be composted. Um, so basically the rest of this waste is just a little bit more soft plastic and a little bit of paper. So I'll just continue to sort this out and then we'll get onto the weighing process. It's a good idea to weigh the total waste at the start of the audit before you weigh the waste category by category. Then you can check to see if you have missed any waste. When you do a waste audit, uh, there's many different ways you can uh, record the information and the most accurate way is by weight and that's the way I've chosen to do so. So I'm using uh, kitchen scales for the light material and the digital hanging scales for uh, the heavier material. The other way to do it is to estimate volume. Um, that's also handy just to make a note that our mixed waste is half a bag and uh, we can estimate the, the rest of the volume, but it's a bit less accurate. Um, and finally, you can record like the number of bottles. So five beer bottles is 2.3 kilos, something like that. Um, I record all my information on a waste audit checklist, uh, which has all the categories of the waste, and I just record the weights. Um, I've based this on New Zealand methodology and Australian methodology, which are quite similar. Um, 
And yeah, now we're going to separate the waste a little bit finer and weigh it. So now I'm going to weigh this using the digital uh, weighing scales because it's going to be quite heavy. I've already turned the scales on and uh, they've teared to zero. So I just simply place the bucket here and let it settle. Uh, so the next thing we need to further separate is in the glass section. Uh, we actually record all the different coloured glasses and whether they're bottles or jars. So I also at this stage removed the lids and some of these are steel lids, some are aluminium and some are mixed waste so I'll put them in the right sections later. So this is some green glass. Two bits of brown glass. And I've got two glass bottles and one glass jar with a steel lid. So I separate the steel lid as well and weigh that separately under steel. So I've got two clear glass bottles, clear glass jar, yeah, two brown beer bottles, I've got the uh, green glass bottles, I, I can weigh them separately as one wine bottle and one juice bottle uh, or I can combine them together. And now we're going to weigh the steel cans which comes under its own category under ferrous metals steel cans. So not too many cans for this household. We've got four beer bottle tops, a sardine can, tomatoes and beans and the steel lid from the pasta sauce. So paper and cardboard actually get split into six different categories. We've got a liquid paper board, uh, which is paper that holds liquid and can be recycled. And we just take the plastic lids off and we'll add them to the mixed waste. We've got newspaper, which gets weighed separately. Anything that's a magazine or a, a printed material that's got colour in it. Uh, cardboard which is a soft, uh, an uncorrugated cardboard. So your toilet rolls go in there. And then other paper, which is things like letters, envelopes. There wasn't much in this waste. And this is a bit of magazine waste. And the sixth category, which we don't have any of, is uh, corrugated cardboard, which is your packaging cardboard. And so now I just record all these separately. So. Our type 2 plastics. It's just a bit windy. I, I probably actually will also remove this lid, which doesn't look like a type 2. My type 3. So as I weigh these, I just put them out of the way so I remember. My type 5s. I've only got one lid for a type 4, which isn't mud. And then I just lay on as many as I need to in one. If I need to do two, two lots, I'll just add them together. And the only other thing that can be recycled that I should have weighed before was my two aluminium lids. And they're just coming in at six grams. Clean up. It's important to disinfect your equipment and yourself. Analyzing results. I entered my results into an Excel spreadsheet. You can create a pie graph to see what your waste is composed of. This will highlight to you areas that you can reduce your waste. Here's an example. I base my weighing methodology on the New Zealand Ministry for the Environment Solid Waste Analysis Protocol. You can download it at this address.